Hi, I'm Clayton, the founder of Kickass Products, and this video is to give you a quick overview of how to set up your DC DC charger. Thank you for purchasing from us. Let's open the box just like you're going to, and I'll show you a little bit about it. So, when we open the box, the first thing that you will do is be astounded by the quality of the product, of course. Carefully take the product out, you'll find the DC DC charger itself. Here's something that will easily be thrown away. It's a little sticker that gives you an indication of what all the lights and specifications are, which you could stick next to the DC charger. So keep that one. You'll also find uh, some zip ties, some connectors, some buck connectors, and a little bit of heat shrink. And of course, our kick-ass manual. Let's take a look at the face of the charger. On your left here, you'll see a solar indicator light, alternator indicator, and also a charging light. Across the top here, next to the mode button, you'll see your different battery types, and you can change them from gel, AGM, wet, calcium, and even lithium. Down the bottom, you'll see the charge status, so you've got bulk, absorption, float, and pulse. So everything here is very easy to see and nice and clear, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Let's look at the cables. It's very, very simple. Anderson, easy to connect. It's easy to disconnect. Uh, we have the red and black cable. This is the one that's going to go to the start battery of your vehicle. The green and black cable. This will go to an unregulated solar panel. And I guess the most important one is the output cable. And this is going to go to the auxiliary battery being charged. This charger will also compensate and adjust for different temperature conditions. And to do that, this long cable here will go to the negative terminal of the auxiliary battery that you're charging. That's the auxiliary battery. There's also a couple of other wires here. One of them is a LED light. So if you say wanted to run an LED light in the dash of your vehicle, you could connect the positive from this and uh, then you can connect the, the, a light to an earth source as well and away it goes and that'll flash when the charger is charging. And this is an ignition wire and this ignition wire, the blue one, needs to be used in vehicles with smart alternators and we'll talk about that a little bit later. The first decision you'll need to make when installing this charger is where are you going to fit it? Now, the key is to put it as close to the auxiliary battery being charged as possible. And a really great thing about this charger is that it's water and dust resistant. So if that means it's under the bonnet of your vehicle, that's fine. Install it in a space and hopefully try to keep it away from heat and water as much as possible, but that's fine. You can put it under the bonnet. If the auxiliary battery is in the rear of your vehicle, in a canopy or in the back of a ute, install the DC charger closest to the battery there. If you've purchased one of our battery boxes, then you'll find that the DC-DC charger is already mounted on top. How simple is that? Let's talk about wiring up the DC charger. And before I begin, I want to tell you that the biggest cause of failures when people set up the DC-DC charger is using crappy cable that they found laying around the house or something their mate gave them. If you've got thin cable or you are not 100% sure that the cable you have is good enough for the job, get rid of it and get some proper cable. I'm not trying to force you to buy our wiring kits, but what I can tell you is that our wiring kits are designed to work in conjunction with the DC-DC charger and make sure you don't have problems. So I'm gonna run you through that quickly. This is our plug and play dual battery system wiring kit. And this cable you're gonna see is nice and heavy and fit for the job. Now this is designed to go onto a battery box. It terminates with an Anderson plug. If you're going to be connecting up to a auxiliary battery straight onto the terminals, you're gonna to have to add this little add-on, which is a Anderson plug via a fuse to ring terminals. And I'll show you that in a moment. Let's take a look inside the dual battery wiring system kit. Here's what you get inside of the dual battery system wiring kit. The first step is this ring terminal via a fuse to Anderson plug adapter. Now that's going to go onto the start battery of your vehicle, red onto the positive, black onto the negative, and then that'll end with this Anderson plug. First step done. Next in the kit, you'll find the long cable, okay? 
And this starts with an Anderson plug and it finishes with bare Anderson terminals. That's so you can run it through the firewall of your vehicle or wherever you need to take it. Um, that Anderson plug there that's already assembled will go on to the Anderson plug that you've connected to the start battery. And then you can run the cable to where your DC charge is going to be located. If you don't need so much cable, it's best that you cut it shorter and included in the kit, you've got a packet of accessories and they're spare Anderson terminals that you can connect up if you do want to shorten the cable. Once you've done that, make sure you use the included zip ties to zip tie everything into place. When you've finished running the cable, that's when you put your Anderson plug on the end and you'll notice that's in the kit here. And when you do that, just make sure that the red wire goes into the positive and you'll see on the Anderson plug that there's a plus for positive and there's also a negative line and the black goes into that. Now when you connect the Anderson plug, make sure that the terminal is facing down like this. You push it in until you hear a click. Next, you'll put your negative into the negative side. And once again, make sure you have the terminal orientated like this. Push it in until you hear a click. Something that's very, very important after you've put that Anderson plug on is to give the uh, cable a pull and make sure that it's locked in place over the spring clip that's inside of the plastic plug to make sure that everything is connected nice and tight. Now that you've run the cable to the rear of the vehicle, you're almost ready to connect this Anderson plug to the alternator input of your DC charger. Before we go any further, I must note that there are many new vehicles with smart alternators that may not work with only this cable connected. So a lot of older vehicles will work fine if you just connect it up and away you go, but many new ones will need to have this ignition wire connected. One of the ways to do it is to connect it up first, just with the Anderson plug and see if the DC-DC charger functions normally. But if you find that the DC charger does not start charging or it starts charging and then it turns off and starts charging again, then you will know that you will need to connect the ignition wire. What is the ignition wire? It's this little blue wire here. This will need to be connected to an ignition source. Now that's a source that will be either in the fuse box of your vehicle or under the bonnet. When you turn the key in your vehicle, you have off, you have accessories and you have on. And you normally have the key in the on position when you're driving. So if you do find that the DC charges turning on and then off again, once it starts charging, or if it's not charging at all, you will need to run a small thin wire to this little blue wire here. Now you can either do that yourself if you're technically minded, or you can do all of the install and then you can go and see an auto electrician who can install a thin blue wire for you. This here, this blue wire is your ignition source. This long cable with a ring terminal is a temperature sensor and it's designed to go on the auxiliary battery being charged. Simply connect it to the negative terminal and this will allow the DC charger to adjust its charge profile based on the temperature of that battery. Pretty smart, eh? Now, if you really want to, you can cut it off, but I don't suggest it because it's here for a reason. Um, it is quite long, but if you cut it, you can't reconnect it. So just zip tie it up and make it as small as possible. The last little wire here is an external LED. What's that for? Well, if you've got the DC charger mounted in a position that you can't see its display, you can run this cable to a 12 volt LED light and any kind of low power LED 12 volt light will be fine. And when the DC charger is in charging mode, the light will flash. And you can run that to a light in the dash or anywhere else you want it to be. But just remember it needs to be a low powered 12 volt LED. This is the positive wire, so you'll have to run the negative wire of that light to a ground source, such as the vehicle chassis, etc. If you've already connected your start battery to the DC-DC charger and you see that all of the lights are flashing, that's a no auxiliary battery connected fault. What I want you to do now is disconnect the DC-DC charger from the start battery and let's get the auxiliary battery connected and then we'll connect it back up to the start battery and I'll run through some of the common fault codes and lights and what they mean. It's time to connect the output of the DC charger to your auxiliary battery. Now that is the brown and black wire and it says output. <laughs> um, if you're connecting up to a battery box, just make sure you connect it to an Anderson plug that goes straight to the battery. 
uh, or if you have any other system you want to connect it directly with an Anderson plug to the auxiliary, no problems. If you do want to connect to a battery on its own, I suggest one of these KA Maxi hands and you'll see the SKU code on the website for this. And this is ring terminals to a fuse to an Anderson plug. And this will allow you to connect a cable to your battery, which can then connect to the output of the DC charger. Let me show you how to do that. So this is the optional uh, cable. So you've got your dual battery wiring kit that we talked about earlier. And this is the optional cable for connecting directly to a battery if you're not connecting with an Anderson plug. And you'll just see it's got a positive, a negative, a fuse and an Anderson plug. So I'll connect that up to this battery. Now we have a fuse connected lead coming from the auxiliary battery to an Anderson plug. And guess what? We just plug that to the brown and black wire on the DC charger. And you'll see that the DC charger comes to life. Wait a moment while it goes through its little startup phase. And the first thing that you'll see here is the battery selection. You'll see at the moment it started on AGM. If I want to change that to a different battery, I just hold my finger down on the mode button. The light will flash. Once it's flashing, I tap it to change. Wet, calcium, lithium, gel, AGM. And then I wait until it stops flashing and the battery type will be set and remembered by the DC charger. Underneath here, you'll see the charge stages. One, two, three, four. And on the left hand side of the screen where you're looking now, you'll see solar, alternator and the charging light. Now there's also fault codes. So if the DC charger is incorrectly wired or there's a problem, you'll notice that all these battery type lights will flash together. So it'll be very obvious. The gel, AGM, wet, calcium and lithium lights will flash. And then these numbers at the bottom will come up with a fault code. So you might have one and three on or two and four on, and you can refer to the product manual to find out what that means, whether it's you've connected it accidentally, reverse polarity to the auxiliary battery or other faults. So if you see all those lights flashing, that is a fault code and you can see what that fault is and refer it to the manual. Just a quick note, we haven't connected the alternator, the start battery to the DC charger at this stage. After you've set the battery type, the light will go off and it will only flash from time to time. If you want to check, just touch it one time and that will confirm the battery type setting. But don't be alarmed if the lights all turn off, okay? The next thing we're going to do is move into connecting now the start battery, the charging cable to the DC-DC charger, the input cable, and I'll go through a little bit of information about that. Here's the moment we've all been waiting for. Now we connect that Anderson plug coming from the start battery of your vehicle to the DC-DC charger. And what we'll now notice is that the alternator light will start to flash. Now we haven't started the car yet, and if you look at the little sticker that comes with the DC charger, this will help you understand what those flashes mean. We've designed the alternator light to give you an indication of what's happening with the start battery, whether the start battery is low, whether it's uh, fully charged, or whether the vehicle's actually running and it's charging, and that's when the DC charger will begin to charge your auxiliary battery. Remember the purpose of the DC charger is to connect your start battery with your auxiliary battery when the car's running and then disconnect it when you turn the key off and you turn the engine off. So this alternator light will give you an indication of what's going on. And remember to check the manual or to check the sticker that comes with it. It's a good idea to stick this sticker somewhere next to the DC charger so you always have a quick reference. There's a delay of 30 seconds before, after you've started the car, before the DC-DC charger will begin to charge. So you need to wait, and once that happens, the charging light will begin to flash. This is great, the DC-DC charger is charging. The charger will go through its charge modes, and one thing to note is once it gets to float mode, this charging light will stop flashing. Don't be alarmed, that's normal. So that's what these lights here are going to tell you about. Alternator light tells you about the start battery and what's happening and charging lets you know when the DC charger is charging. You know about your uh, battery type, you can touch the button to see the battery type and down the bottom here you can see the charging mode, whether it's in bulk, absorption, float or pulse mode. The last plug to talk about is the green and black solar panel input cable. 
Now this is designed to connect to any 12 volt solar panel. When I say 12 volt, it's a bit of a funny thing. They call them 12 volt panels, but generally they have a solar panel voltage of between 21 and 23 volts. It's not designed to connect to house type solar panels which have a higher voltage. You need to make sure that you have an unregulated output coming from your solar panel. A lot of solar panels you'll buy in the market have a solar controller and that solar controller then runs out to an Anderson plug. You need to make sure the output of the solar panel itself goes directly into this plug because you can't plug a solar controller into another solar controller, which is what the DC charger is. So an unregulated solar panel plugs into this via the Anderson plug and then you're set to go. You're all connected up and your DC DC charger is ready for action. I hope that this video has taught you everything you need to know to get your new Kickass DC DC charger up and running. If you do run into any trouble, don't worry, just send an email to our customer service team because I've made a troubleshooting video. They'll send you a link and you can watch that and that will get you on your way. Thanks for purchasing a Kickass DC DC charger. You're a bloody legend. Catch you later.